Frank Reich held his press conference on Monday, meaning he'll be the Panthers coach for at least one more week. Were the Panthers to lose on Sunday to the Titans, would it make any sense for David Tepper to pull the plug of six weeks to go? We'll talk about it right here on Locked On Panthers. You are Locked On Panthers, your daily Carolina Panthers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, as always, Julian Council, talking Carolina Panthers with you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Your team every day. That's our motto here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Subscribe or follow our show for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter at Julian Council, where tomorrow and the rest of the Wednesdays throughout the rest of the regular season, I'll be answering your weekly Wednesday mailbag questions either at me or DM me to get into this week's edition of the weekly Wednesday mailbag right here on Locked On Panthers. Today's episode of Locked On Panthers is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We'll get into the good, the bad, and the ugly from the Carolina Panthers' thirty-three to ten loss at. Home, put that in quotes against the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday as Panthers are now one and nine as they head into three straight road games starting off this Sunday in Tennessee against the three and seven Titans. And then we'll talk about some things Frank Reich had to say at his press conference. But first off, let's get into this. I asked going into the week whether we would see a repeat of last year when the Panthers dropped the one and four. They had their stadium taken over by the San Francisco 49ers and were thoroughly embarrassed in the fan base. And clearly David Tepper had seen enough from Matt rule and everyone is able to move on that Monday afternoon. I was wondering after the Panthers, once again, watch their stadium be taken over by the Dallas Cowboys and were thoroughly embarrassed by the Cowboys losing 33 to 10 at home. If we would see a repeat, of what we saw last year after that week five loss to the 49ers. Well, it looks like Frank Reich is still the head coach for now here in Carolina as he did hold his Monday press conference as he does following every Panthers game that's played on a Sunday. I think just in particular, I think they always have a Monday press conference regardless of when the games are played. So Frank Reich, for now, is here to stay. Now let's go back to what happened the first time David Tepper had a coach here in Carolina, Ron Rivera, who he inherited. Rivera went to the press conference dais and spoke on that Monday. Then Tuesday on his day off, he was fired. Now a lot of people out there across the NFL media found that to be disrespectful. Why had Ron Rivera go through all of that on Monday, go through the team meetings, and then on Tuesday, the day off, fire him? And that would be a rough look again for David Tepper. We had Frank Reich speak on Monday. He's going to talk again on Tuesday because, you know, there's a holiday called Thanksgiving on Thursday. So this wouldn't really make a lot of sense anyways for the Panthers to move on from a coach. If you're going to do it, you probably would want to do it during the mini buy, like they just had leading into Dallas game or after the bye week, which after six games, that wasn't going to be really anything that made a lot of sense to do. That would be way too early to pull the plug. Uh, but if you're going to do it now, I would think that you would wait to where it's not a holiday week and you don't have a weird practice schedule where things made sense. But I do wonder, though, would it make sense to even pull the plug on Frank Reich with seven or six or five games left to go here in 2023? I've already made my thoughts known about this. I don't think Frank Reich is going to survive it. And if he does, it's because David Tepper decides to scapegoat Scott Fitter, even though David Tepper is certainly one of the main reasons why the Carolina Panthers are in this position at one and nine. He decided to hire Scott Fitter. He decided to hire Frank Reich. He was the one that was very bullish on Bryce Young being the starting quarterback here in Carolina. And the jury is still out on Bryce and plenty of people in that building without the persistence of David Tepper truly did like Bryce Young at number one overall. But still, there's been a lot of mistakes made here in Carolina, and they fought the feet of the owner, David Tepper. And maybe it's me, Scott Bitter, who's the scapegoat for all that. Well, maybe not even a scapegoat. He certainly has not done enough to feel secure in his job, I believe. But he's not um, responsible for all of the mistakes as far as personnel. 
and draft issues over the last couple seasons. We understand that. It's all collaborative. And because of that, maybe they're all going to be gone. And I think that's probably uh, the likelihood of that being ha happening very high at this point in time at one and nine. And it's hard to see how they're going to be able to turn things around enough for David Tepper to really buy into what Fitterer and what Reich and this staff are selling him heading into 2024, knowing that Bryce Young and his development is going to be paramount this offseason, trying to get Bryce Young enough weapons around him on the outside and, of course, in the backfield, finding an offensive line that can help him, where there's some questions as all five of the projected starters heading to this year are under contract. And so is Cade Mays and Chandler Zavala. So how much are they going to rebuild that offensive line? Are they just going to retool it? We'll see what it looks like. But for me, when it comes down to the development of Bryce Young, I don't know how it really helps him moving forward into the final six weeks after this Titans game to not have Frank Reich there, to potentially not have Thomas Brown. If you get rid of one or two of them, I do wonder who would be the interim. Would it be a Jero Vero? And if that's the case, Reich's obviously gone. Does Thomas Brown stick around and call the plays again? Does it go to Parks Frazier? Does Jim Caldwell come out of wherever he's hiding within the building and be the play caller? How does that help Bryce Young in the final six, five, however many weeks uh, be a better quarterback? If it's the final two weeks of the season, then I guess so be it, I, I suppose. Uh, but if it's going to be a five or six game schedule remaining, you might as well just keep Frank Reich there and coach out the remainder of the season. Now, we've seen different tactics. We've seen David Tepper fire Ron Rivera four weeks left to go on a Tuesday. We've seen last year him fire a Matt Rule with 12 games left to go into the season, even though he had seen – Plenty for Matt Rule to know that this was not the guy who was ever going to lead them to the sustained success that he promised when he fired Ron Rivera back in 2019. Um, and we've even seen the past, the former owner, Jay Richardson, he decided, you know what, John Fox, this team stinks. This has been a rough season. The quarterbacks have been atrocious. The fans are going to suffer through this. You're also going to suffer through this. So maybe it's going to be one of those where David Tepper decides, hey, I'm miserable. The fans are miserable. Everyone's miserable. Frank you're going to sit here and be miserable with us for all 17 games of this season. And then, yes, you can move on on Black Monday. But if, as far as just the development of Bryce Young and just continuity and stability, and that's really the most important thing for Bryce moving forward, uh, whether they decide to move on from Frank or not, they have to find stability for the quarterback. He can't be learning a different system every offseason, and he cannot be in that situation where – he doesn't know who he's going to be working with. They need to find the talent around him that he can grow with. They need to be able to find some offensive linemen that he can trust and develop a good connection there with. And he needs to have a play caller. That's just going to be his primary play caller. It does not need to be a switch after six weeks and after three weeks where nothing's changed. He needs stability. So for the sake of Bryce Young the rest of the way, probably having stability with Frank Reich staying here may make the most sense just knowing that okay, fine, Reich's not going to change anything. The season's already lost. And maybe the best thing for Bryce Young is just to be able to have him there, have that experience, that wisdom that we thought was going to pay dividends so far the season, which hasn't. So I guess saying that as well, maybe it won't matter, but I do wonder just what does that do for Bryce in the last six or seven games if they decided that, hey, Reich, it's over with. How does that improve his development at all uh, the rest of the way? So that would probably be, aside from just this year, the main reason why you would keep Frank Reich around is stability. He's got to win some games, though, and Bryce is going to have to improve dramatically in the final seven games of the season for there to be any case aside from stability uh, to keep Frank Reich here beyond the 2023 regular season. So we'll see how it plays out. But right now, holiday week didn't really make a lot of sense to do that now thinking about it. And we'll see what happens if they do fall to one in 10 against a Titans team that is also not very good. So that will be determined, of course, later on this week. The Panthers again fell 33 to 10 at home as Dallas Cowboys fans took over Bank of America Stadium as they tend to do, but worse than we've ever seen before on Sunday. Look back at the good, the bad, and the ugly from the Panthers' loss against Dallas here in just a moment on Locked On Panthers. 
You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All-in prices show your total upfront, so you know what you're getting. A great deal without hidden fees. Buy tickets in seconds with two taps take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time download the game time app create an account and use code locked on nfl for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and redeem code locked on nfl that's l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n-n-f-l for 20 dollars off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed this show is sponsored by better help this time of year can be a lot. It's natural to feel some sadness or anxiety about it, but adding something new and positive to your life can counteract some of those feelings. Therapy can be a bright spot amid all the stress and change, something to look forward to, to make you feel grounded, and to give you the tools to manage everything going on. If you're thinking of starting therapy, get BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. Sunday was an extremely predictable result. The Carolina Panthers got blown out by a Dallas Cowboys team that right now is far superior than them. And, well, Carolina Panthers fans, now they took the advice of many people out there, including myself. The performance of Sunday went out there, and they did anything but be at Bank of America Stadium. And, well, David Tepper, and that's on you, man. This is the product that you're selling the fan base. And I do not blame a single person for not wanting to go out there and waste their Sunday afternoon being surrounded by the most obnoxious fan base in the NFL. I cannot imagine how bad Uptown Charlotte was on Sunday afternoon. And God bless any of y'all who went out there to support this team. And seriously, God bless you for still going out there and supporting the team. And if you want to go watch the games and support the team, by all means, go out there and do it. I'm not going to sit here and say that it's foolish. I'm not going to sit here and say that you're crazy to do it. Because if that's what you want to do, there's – and the thing about it too, you go, you watch the games, and you can enjoy time with your family, and you can look back on all the special memories you made. Now, you might not have been able to watch too many wins over the course of the last couple of years, but at least there's probably some bright spots that you have in your own personal life, uh, life that you've seen uh, with your experience going to the Carolina Panther games. So there's still that. It's not all bad. You can find the positives, of course, throughout all of the endless pit of sadness that we're sitting in right now with the Panthers. But uh, let's get into the good, the bad, and the ugly from the latest loss as the Cowboys trounced the Panthers 33-10. to 10. The Panthers were competitive for a period of time, but mistakes, the inability to score points on offense, that led to the Dallas Cowboys routing the Panthers by 23 points. But first off, we talk about the positives, and we – pretty much know all the bad and the ugly stuff. So let's spend some time thinking about some positive things that happened on Sunday. The running game all year long, you and I and everyone out there have been imploring Frank Reich, Thomas Brown, and anyone else on that coaching staff to find a way to find Bryce Young some semblance of a running game that he can lean on and not to ask him to do everything. I understand that at some point in time, the Carolina Panthers, if Bryce Young's really going to be the franchise quarterback here, he's going to have to elevate what's around him. But as a rookie, that's way too much to ask. Now, is Stroud doing that in Houston? Maybe. I don't watch enough Houston Texans game to really know whether that's the case or what he has around him looks better. Now, what I saw when he played here looked like it was better. Nico Collins, Tank Dell. Does the Panthers have anybody with that kind of speed? And agility on the roster, um, I don't I don't see it. The offensive line clearly is better. Uh, is he elevating that team? He's got to be doing something, which is part of the concern about Bryce Young. But you can't ask your rookie to have to do everything. You can't ask your rookie to have to carry the offense with his legs because he's running for his life and with his arms. So the running game, finally, arm, not arms, but his, the running game finally uh, showed some promise on Sunday. We saw way more of a downhill rushing attack in the first half. And Frank Reich had talked about that too, how 
when you looked at the film, he saw that they were really good. The offensive line was when it came uh, to run blocking. And he was asked about the offensive line's performance on Monday, saying that he thought they showed some effectiveness in the run game uh, and 12 personnel uh, using inside and outside zone run schemes and to use some different run schemes as well. As we saw, it felt like they were going way more inside zone and they were going downhill, not trying to get outside. And one of the few times they tried to get outside, minus four yardage on that play. So when they got back to what makes this offensive line good, at least competent, they had success in the first half. They had 85 yards rushing, uh, 6.1 yards per carry. And then after that, they just got away from it. Uh, 23 carries, 110 yards, 4.8 yards per carry total in the game. Would have liked to have seen them run the ball more. They had a great mix of run and pass uh, on that 17 play, 70 yard drive. Don't know why they got away from that. Uh, they were still in the game even after that. Uh, but Chuba Hubbard, him, Miles Sanders, this is what I was hoping to see, especially once Miles was banged up and really got off to a slow start, did not show the same explosive that we saw last year in Philadelphia that we had hoped he would bring to Carolina. Chuba Hubbard, 10 carries, 57 yards. It's 5.7 yards per carry. Miles Sanders, 11 carries, 50 yards, 4.5 yards per carry. Like, that is the split that we're looking for. Sanders has played better the last couple of weeks. Hubbard, he's you know just been chuba so if that's what you're going to get from the two the rest of the way then you're going to have a chance to get some wins if their offensive line can protect and of course if bryce young uh can link up with some of those receivers down the field uh, uh mixing up offensive looks was also another good thing now, the most that we've seen bryce young under center all season long and frank reich said that they had plans going to the game to be under center be in a pistol be in a shotgun don't really feel like i saw a lot of pistol looks uh and then later on in the game once they abandoned the run and they were down and they're running out of time they were of course a ton in the gun and that's when bryce young got sacked three straight times and that was just everything you've seen all season long to why he has struggled and why his panthers offense has been atrocious but it was cool to see as greg olson talked about on the broadcast that should be their identity moving forward. The mix of run and pass, the play action that they use on that 7Z play, 70 yard drive, they want 858 there in the, first, in the uh, third quarter to make it 17 10. Like that's who they need to be moving forward. And they got away from that the rest of the way. So if they can do that against Tennessee, a team I think they absolutely can do that against, we may see some positives moving forward in the final seven games of the season. Another positive Adam Thielen, eight receptions for 74 yards. He, is the only guy that Bryce Chung trusts. And when he's targeted, he's the only one that makes any plays on this team. He had 11 of the 26 targets on the day. That just illustrates how poor the Panthers did a job of building around uh, Bryce Young this offseason. Uh, Derek Brown, Troy Hill, both of those guys thought played really well in defense. Brown, six tackles, four of them solo, had a tackle for loss. Troy Hill was really good in the first half. He had eight tackles overall, three solo, three pass breakups, having to step in there as J.C. Horn missed yet again. Maybe Horn will be back this week. We'll get more of an injury update on him probably on Tuesday, uh, if not, then on Wednesday. So that was the good. Uh, over to the bad the defense, they came out, out of the bye. They played well. I thought for the most part on Sunday, they played a good game. They kept it competitive. The offense has just got to do something. But they also, they gifted the Cowboys 10 points. Uh, in the first half, the, the Cowboys got first down to penalties on second and 13, third and 19, third, third and 10, third and 16. And it's just plays where they're just overly aggressive. The face mask and horse collar on the same play by Xavier Woods. You don't have to do that. you got help right there. Why even be in that situation? The guy's going down to the boundary. And then just a dumb boneheaded stuff by Deshaun Williams. And you have... Amari Barno, Dak Prescott sliding down. It's just so simple just not to do those things, and they kept doing it. So 10 points right there off the defensive penalties, I feel like, kept those drives alive for the Cowboys, and that was part of the difference in the game. Another bad, Bryce Young. He wasn't good in this game, and there's reasons why he wasn't good, but this is, this is the problem that the Panthers have and what, what Frank Reich has. Bryce Young is not developing. 16 of 29. For 123 yards, touchdown, interception, had an 8.6 QBR, which is brutal, 62.9 passer rating. Like those numbers just keep going down. They're not going up. And that is not ideal, obviously, uh, for the Carolina Panthers, as that's supposed to be their franchise quarterback. That's the guy they gave up a ton of picks and including DJ Moore to go get. And this is what they're getting after his ninth start in the NFL as they are one and nine. 
Uh, the ugly, we know it. It's the offensive line. The Panthers, they have a lot to figure out when it comes to the O-line. Iki Iquanu, is his future at left tackle or is it inside at left guard or right guard? Um, Brady Christensen, he's under contract next year. Where do you put him? He's We already know he's not a left tackle. Does he start at guard again or is he just going to be depth at center? Bradley Bozeman, is that someone that you move off of after this season, after he's had his struggles at right guard, Austin Corbett, I would imagine would be back because they restructured his deal, uh, but we'll see if that's what they want to do. There is an out in his contract uh, this upcoming off season. Same case with Taylor Moten, where there's a ton of dead money if they want to get rid of him. And there are some decent cap implications as far as opening up some salary cap space for the Panthers. If they cut him post June 1st, but the Panthers already have about projected $57 million in cap space. Uh, they need, more solid offensive line and not getting rid of the guy who's been really the only constant on that O-line for five plus years here in Carolina. They got to figure out what they want to do. You got Kate Mays, you got Chandler Zavala also going to be coming back on their rookie deals. Uh, they're going to need to retool. I don't know if they need to completely overall and rebuild this O-line, but what they've done so far this season, whether it's been the offensive scheme or just an overall regression from those guys, it is not working and it's not acceptable. It is not going to be what they uh, can allow next year if they want to see Bryce Young take any sort of positive step. But they've allowed 39 sacks so far this season. That's the fourth most in the NFL. Um, and Frank Reich was asked about the sacks. He said a couple of the sacks were the Cowboys just winning one-on-one -on -one matchups, which, yeah, that happens. Uh, they get paid too. Micah Parsons, uh, yeah, that dude gets paid a lot. and He's a monster. And he went out there and he just made a fool out of his Chandler Zavala out of I think Taylor Moten got him one time. He got Bradley uh, Bozeman at some point. Uh, he got everybody. So that dude was special and is special. And Frank Reich also said a couple of times they didn't execute the double teams. And that's just got to be better with technique. That's unacceptable. And then one of them sounds like it goes on Bryce. He said the protection call was changed to the wrong call on another one of the sacks. It should have stayed at the original protection call. And well, that obviously did not work out for the Panthers. So it's not all an offensive line stat. Also can be on the quarterback and the Panthers got to figure out how to be better. And he was asked about the interior of the offensive line. Frank Reich was, he said that they've made some good improvements in the run game. They just need to translate that to the passing game, which as we've seen through 10 weeks of the season has not happened. Now Frank Reich, he's going to hang on, be the coach at least for one more week. We'll see what David Tepper decides to do if they do lose again on Sunday uh, against Tennessee, heading into a three-game road swing. But Frank Reich had some more things to say about his uh, coaching staff and the team on the Monday after the loss to Dallas. I'll give you some of the takeaways from what he had to say on Monday here in just a moment on Locked On Panthers. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. And this is the perfect time to get in on the action, y'all. We got Thanksgiving week going on right now. We got plenty of football, broke pro and college. It's rivalry week in college football this weekend. So get in on that big Ohio State, Michigan game, or whatever game you want to get in this week. You also got college hoops. It's feast week, so check all that out. Got the NBA going on, in-season tournament. Just so many sports. Love to have it right now here later on in the fall. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, as I said, there's no better time to get in, in on, the, on the action. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Frank Reich was back at the podium on Monday in Charlotte to talk to the local media following the Carolina Panthers 33-10 loss to Dallas. Had plenty of things to say. Uh, we talked about it, uh, his thoughts on the offensive line. They have improved in the run game, but they have not uh, translated that to the pass protection so far. Maybe that will change starting on Sunday at Tennessee. We will see. Uh, Frank Reich was once again asked about staff changes, and you know, Bash I heard of Carolina Blitz was asking, like, typically, you know, when you're this bad, um, she did say fans like to see a change and fans do. And I don't think Frank Reich's necessarily concerned about fans wanting someone to get fired. He did it last year. Mike K had asked because he fired his OC there in Indianapolis. And that's typically the first sign. Hey, you fire your OC and, and then you try to move forward as you have a scapegoat. And then after that, if you keep losing. It's like, all right, you're next up, buddy. There's you don't get too many chances to change things as a coach. Um, and now he's kind of changed back. He has not fired Thomas Brown or anyone on the staff. Uh, he said that he believes strongly in his players and coaches, and he's going to be patient and trust you guys. There's a reason why you hire these people, so let them go do their job. 
Uh, staff changes are going to happen at some point. If Frank Reich's going to stick around for another year, there's going to be a ton of staff changes and might make more sense for Frank Reich to bring in guys that he's familiar with. That was a big thing. Frank Reich was going to bring in people he had never worked with before. And Thomas Brown was one of those guys. I think it's part of the reason why Thomas Brown uh, was not the play car at the beginning of the season. And it may be a reason why Thomas Brown is not the play caller right now. Uh, Frank Reich's trying to, you know, be more trusting in himself and the people he's worked with more often. And maybe that should have been the path that they went down. We'll see if he gets an opportunity. I, I doubt it. Uh, it would be completely contrary to what David Tepper's done in the past, him showing that kind of patience. I don't know if it would lead uh, to the results that we all want here. Uh, but we'll see. But no staff changes are upcoming and I'm forthcoming. I don't really think it's not going to change anything. The roster is not good enough and they've done a terrible job coaching. Anyways, they're one and nine seasons over. So whatever. Uh, he also hasn't given any thoughts moving Thomas Brown or Josh McCown to the booth. Parks Frazier, the passing game coordinator. Uh, he's already up there and Reich says he likes the, uh, their process, kind of how they have things going on on game days. Don't, again, don't say it's going to change anything. Don't have the talent. Uh, they have not done a good job, enough got a good enough job coaching. The season is lost. He also, there's a quick question about, hey, things seem to be kind of, seem to be kind of calm. And I've had people ask me this. Someone asked me this beginning of the preseason, like, am I, am I concerned that Frank Reich is too cool or like too laissez-faire? And I, I don't even remember what I even said to this guy. I, I don't think I was really all that concerned. It's like, okay, yeah, that's just his demeanor. I don't think he needs to be like this intense rah-rah guy um, in order for the team to win. Um, but clearly, whatever they've been doing isn't working. And he was asked about, should there be more tension in the locker room? And he he said, no. <laughs> Frank Reich said, no, there's not need to be more any more tension. Uh, he does say that they have a, a lot of honest conversations during film review, that the coaches have their own honest conversation about how they need to coach better. The players, they'll stand up and say, hey, my bad, that was on me. Uh, but my bad when you're one and nine ain't good enough. And my bad when you were 0 and 6 wasn't good enough. At 0 and 4 wasn't good enough. Hell, at 0 and 2 wasn't good enough. Like the my bads, that's gotten the Panthers nowhere. So there probably needs to be some change as far as the culture within the locker room the rest of the way if they want to change anything. Because what they're doing is not working. And I understand the process and the, just the results have not been there. They feel like the process is right. They have the right players, right coaches, and all that. It's clear the players aren't the right co players. It's clear the coaches are not the right coaches. Like Something's got to change. If you're not going to fire anybody, then you need to light a fire under the rest of the staff and this locker room's ass – so that you're not going out there and having the first one in 16 season in the history of the NFL. Cause that's right now where this thing is headed. So we'll see. Uh, and then another thing about the offensive line, Chandler Zavala was awful on Sunday, not surprising to anyone who watched him play, uh, begin the season young guy put in a tough situation where he's clearly not ready to go. Um, and it's been completely overvalued. How many games he played of Iki Aquanu back at NC State at left guard? He has now played the same amount of games at, in college at left guard uh, with Iki as he has in the NFL. And it has been a disaster. He is not a good player right now. Not saying he cannot be a good player and develop into that, but right now he is a liability. Now he's not alone. There's been a lot of liabilities on the offensive line. But if you trade it, if you got rid of Calvin Throckmorton, who was immediately picked up to put him in that spot, and that's the result in that. That is troubling. Maybe give Cade Mays an opportunity. Give Nash Jensen an opportunity. Give someone else an opportunity because Chandler Zavala, he ain't it right now. Maybe in the future, but right now, that is not the case. And Frank Reich has said they have not discussed whether he'll be the left guard, the starter at left guard this week. Don't really see any reason why. But we'll find out later on this week as we talk about it here on the show. That's going to wrap up this edition of the Locked On Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, hosted by yours, Julie, Julian Council. Getting y'all subscribe or follow the show for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And be sure to follow me, Julian Council, on Twitter at Julian Council, where tomorrow I'll be back to answer your weekly Wednesday mailbag questions, either at me or DM me to get those questions into me now. But in the meantime, be safe, be happy, be whole. As always, keep pounding. And I'll talk to y'all on Wednesday.